In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a simple world generator with biomes similar to the one in my survival game. We'll start by setting up the scene. Take a node 2D and rename it to world generator. Then add a tile map and Y sort node. Now we're going to attach a script to the world generator. We're going to start by declaring a few variables. Export var width equals 600 and export var height equals 200. We're also going to create on ready variable for the tile map. Now we're going to create a few dictionaries for the different attributes of the world generator ver temperature, ver altitude, and ver biome. These will be used to decide the biome later on. We're also going to create a variable called var open simplex noise, which just creates a new open simplex noise. Now, in order to actually see the world that we're generating, we're going to need a tile map. And this is the tile set that I'll be using, but you can use whatever you want. So just drag the file into the editor and click on your tile map and create a new tile set. Now my tile set looks kind of blurry and to fix that I'm just going to click on the file, click the import tab and select filter and uncheck and re-import. Now all we have to do is create single tiles for every single tile that we want to use. Just select the tile and create a new single tile. Repeat this step for all of the tiles that you want to use. Once you've finished, you can see that we can now use these tiles to draw. However, they look slightly small. To fix this, we have to change the default tile size. In the right of the editor, click cell and change the size from 64 by 64 to whatever size of tile you're using. The texture for my tiles is actually slightly larger than that of the cell size, so I have to select centered textures so I get an overlapping effect. Depending on your tile set, you may or may not have to do this. Back in the code editor, we're going to define a new function called generate map, which takes in the period and octave. These are two values that influence a noise map and how it looks. The first thing we're going to do is take our open simplex noise and set the seed to a random number. This will make it so that we generate a new map every time we run this function. Now we're just going to set the open simplex noise is period and octaves to their corresponding function inputs. We're also going to create a new variable called grid name, which is just going to store an empty dictionary. Now we're going to loop through the width and height of our map. And the first thing that we're going to do is a bit of a complicated step. We're going to create a variable called rand which we're going to set to two times the absolute value of open simplex noise dot get noise 2d and we're going to pass in the x and y that we're looping through. This will basically return the value of the noise at a specific position and multiply it by two. So it will give us random values ranging from zero to one. Now what we're going to do is put this value into grid name. So we're going to use a vector 2 of x and y as the key. And for the value, we're going to use rand. This function will return grid name. Inside the ready function, we're going to call this generate map function with the different period and octave values. I'm using the values that I find work best, but you can play around with this to use any values that you want. So now we're going to define a new function called a set tile, and this is going to take the parameters width and height. So once again, we're going to loop through the width and the height. So 
Now we're just going to create a few variables to make our lives slightly easier. We're going to do var pose, which is just going to store the current position to be vector2, which will store x and y, instead of having to write this out multiple times. We're also going to do a similar thing with altitude, moisture, and temperature. So var alt equals altitude pose, var temperature or var temp equals temperature pose, and var moist equals moisture pose. These are just the temperature, altitude, and moisture at a certain position. Now we're going to start defining the actual biomes themselves. So I'm just going to create a comment for ocean and write the parameters for an ocean, which will just be if the altitude is less than 0 0.2. And what we're going to do is we're going to do tile map dot set cell v, which just sets a cell at a certain position. So we're going to write pose, which is the current position that we're at, and we're going to set it to our water tile. So if we go back into the editor, we can check what position our water is by hovering over the tile. As you can see, grass is zero, jungle grass is one, and water is 3. So back in the script, we just write 3, and we should have oceans. For now, let's just add an else condition which sets any other tile to jungle grass. So tilemap.cell v post to 1. And if when we run the scene, it's going to ask us to select our current scene, and well, oh, nothing's working. Okay, so this is because I forgot to call the set tile function in the ready. So we just call the functions in the ready function, set tile width and height. And now when I run the game, you can see that we have blobs generating, which will be the islands, and we can also see the ocean. Now, in order to see this better, we can create an input event. And if we press the space bar or enter key, it will refresh the current scene. And to do that, we're going to write get tree dot reload current scene. And this function will basically refresh the current scene that is being run. So now when we run the game again, we can see that once we press the space bar, we get a new world generated each time. Now, in order to add beaches, we're going to look for altitude values between 0.2 and 0.25. These values will be located at the edges of the land masses and right near the water, which will look like a beach. And we're just going to set the values at those positions to our sand tile. And as you can see, when we run the game, there are beaches. Now, writing if alt is greater than or equal to 0 0.2 and alt is less than 0 0.25, that's a lot of work. So in order to make that easier, we're going to create a new function. This one's just going to be called between, which will take a value, a starting value, and an ending value. And all this function is going to do is check if the value that we're given is less than the ending value and greater than the starting value. And if this is true, it will just return true. So now, instead of writing all of this stuff, we can delete it and write elif between, and we're going to do the po altitude at the current position, 0 0.2 and 0 0.25. So if it's between those values, it will set it to a beach. Now, for the fun part, the majority of the biomes. What we're going to do is create another elif, which will be any altitude values between 0 
and 0 0.8. So the first problem that we're going to do is the plane. So if the moisture is between 0 and 0 0.4 and the temperature is between 0 0.2 and 0 0.6, we're going to set the tile map at the current position to the planes biome. So when we run the game, you can see that planes are being generated along with the beaches and oceans. All we have to do now is fill in the rest of the gray area. So another bound. If between the moisture values of 0 0.4 and 0 0.9, And if the temperature is greater than 0 0.6, we're going to set the current biome to jungle because it's hot and moist. So if we run the scene again, you can see that not only do we have planes generating, but we also have occasional jungles. And another biome, if the temperature is greater than 0 0.7 and the moisture is less than 0 0.4, we're going to set the current tile to the sand tile, which will be a desert. Oh, it should be elif, and I spelled moist incorrectly. So when we run the scene again, you see now we also have deserts along with our other two biomes. Now it's your job to come up with new biomes and add them to your map. And what you want to try to do is fill in all the possible values of the moisture, temperature, and altitude. So I would highly recommend creating a grid like this where you can color in the grids for the different biomes. This is really helpful to help you not miss any of your tiles. In the next part of this tutorial series, you'll be learning how to instance objects based on the biome and adding tile variation to each biome. All of the codes seen here will be on GitHub, which is linked below.